Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworm Stock and today I'm going to film my very delayed 2016 favorites. I was gonna film it, then I wasn't, and now I decided, you know what, just do it because I regret not doing it last year, so we're doing it late. All right, so first off, I'm going to start off with my favorite book of the year. Now last year, I think I read, I think I read like three books. Like that was it, which is disgraceful. I had a really, 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 really busy year last year to the point where I was so stressed out with school that any free time I had, I didn't want to do anything that would result in work later. There was a lot of different stuff, but I'm just gonna <laughs> keep it at that because I don't want to complain. But this year I've already read as many as I read last year. <laughs> Anyway, back to the favorites. My favorite of the year, out of my three, uh, is Fuck Love by Taryn Fisher. Now, Taryn Fisher, I love her writing. I actually love the cover of this book, too. Isn't it cool? It's not my taste at all, but, like, I love it. And as extreme as this book sounds, it actually is um, softer of her novels compared to, like, Mudvayne and Marrow, for sure. I'm gonna read you just a little back bit, because it's been a really long time since I read it, so I don't know if I could give you a proper summary. So Fuck Love goes a little bit like this. Helena Conway has fallen in love, unwillingly, unwittingly but not unprovoked. Kit Isley is everything she's not, unconstructed, untethered, and not even a little bit careful. It could all be so beautiful if he wasn't dating her best friend. Helena must defy her heart, do the right thing, and think of others until she doesn't. See, now this is a book in which, this is one of those books that in my last review, how I said it has to be done really carefully, that forbidden love kind of thing, it was done carefully. It has to be done in a really spectacular way. The writing has to sell me. The characters have to be raw. And God, there's so much that's so cool in this book. Like I'm thinking back now and oh man, my love for it. There's a little something extra in this book that's not just what's on the back. But I don't want to tell you because spoilers, but I'll have my review linked up in a card so that you can go and get a better summary if you are curious if I sparked your interest. Now I want to talk about TV shows next because I just hit the mother load on TV shows this year. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Mr. Robot. I just am in love with that show. The first season specifically, the second season I'm not really a fan of, but man, that first season. I have a lot of shows, so I'm not gonna go on too terribly long, but I wanna give you some kind of summary, right? Because if I just say it's amazing, like everything's amazing. It's in my favorites, of course it is. Sorry for my text messaging things. Trump is signing a thing that could affect her fault. Anyway, that's what's going on back in 2017. So Mr. Robot's about this guy who is really, really computer smart and tech smart. And there's a lot of code that goes on in this. So he kind of joins this um, underground hacker group, which I can't remember the name to. In essence, it's more of like a takedown Wall Street kind of thing. Uh, but there are a lot of implications that they think that uh, would work out for the better. Like they're going to erase everyone's debt, uh, but like it's going to end up doing other damage. And anyway, it's just really fucking cool. If you are a fan of V for Vendetta, watch it. It's not like it's boom, bow as like Beaver Vendetta, but if you like that kind of plot, I bet you would like this. Next show I want to talk about is The X-Files. So you guys know, watching my channel this year, like it was like my longest binge of a show. So they're a government team and they kind of work on these unknown things that happen and to kind of like tie loose in. So it ends up being a lot of like paranormal stuff and aliens also. And they kind of get teamed up. So there's Scully and Mulder who's been there. He's kind of who started the department. Uh, it, eh, more like he was like thrown into that because no one else wanted to work with him. They call him Spooky Mulder. Anyway, so Scully is a scientist. He's more of a believer in aliens. He believes his sister was abducted by aliens when he was young and that's kind of what drove his desire to discover more and explain more and I don't know. I think ultimately kind of come in contact with aliens and find his sister. They create really nice foils for each other having someone who just explains it away, explains it away, even if she sees spectacular stuff that she can't explain, she can always find a way to try to make it make more sense. And then Mulder as someone who really believes. So I feel like you could be one kind of person or the other kind of person to watch the show and still enjoy it. Um, another show kind of on that same line is How the Universe Works, a uh, documentary series, I would say, where it explains like different scientific facts. I think it's a Discovery Channel show or a Science Channel show. It explains different parts of the universe that we're beginning to understand, or we're theorizing about, or if there's a second earth, how dark matter and like, gravity works and like black holes and different sometimes it specifically focuses on planets or comets or like how we think the earth came to be or stuff like that super super fascinating if you are into space you gotta watch it now this next one i watched literally at the very end of 2016 it is called the oa i loved this show i can't even give you a summary on this but please watch it for me out of every show i'm mentioning it's it's my favorite like, I fucking loved it so much. You have to get past the first episode. You can't just stop watching on the first episode and decide whether it's for you or not. You have to give it two episodes because everything changes in that second episode. If you don't like the first 
then it's okay, you'll probably like the second and then that's kind of where the rest of the series falls. But you get so enraptured with the characters and like, oh my god, it's like a mystery and you just, you want to know everything and you get like little details told to you through story and it's just, oh, it's incredible. Now these last three I'm going to mention very quickly because either I've talked about them a lot before or everyone has talked about it. Stranger Things, loved it, super good. Scandal, I didn't like it. Like the current season that's on, but I really did binge it and I was obsessed with it. So I really, really liked that. Everyone knows what Scandal is. And Ghost Adventures, which I talk about like every month of my favorites. Ghost Adventures is so fun. It's like Ghost Hunters, but so much funnier and like it's not as scary, but then sometimes they find stuff that like, you're like, I can't explain that. Like it's made me question whether or not I believe in ghosts or not. Now I have two more categories before I get into makeup. I probably should have prefaced that at the very beginning of the video, but I am gonna talk about makeup, but I'm gonna keep that towards the end for those of you who aren't very interested in it. So first I'm gonna do movies and music. So I'm gonna do music first, just to kind of like break up the visual arts. Okay, so Keaton Henson's two albums that I've just loved. I fell in love with like his music in general all year this year. Birthdays and Kindly Now are just my favorites of his this year. I fell in love with his music so hard. It's so atmospheric and meaningful and different albums feel very individualistically their own. Like yes, there's like that theme throughout all of his music of it just sounding very um, songwriter, but not in like a folky way, just in a very, I feel like they wrote this from heartbreak and then they're singing it to like a small group of people and it's very intimate and it's just, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm still so torn whether Kindly Now or Birthdays is my favorite, but I think Kindly Now is more lyrically based and beautiful in that way. Whereas Birthdays, while also having some beautiful lyrics in there, is more, um, musically strong, I would say. Um, I love both just for different reasons. Now Lord Huron, I still don't know if I'm saying it right, but I fell in love with that band as well. Also very atmospheric. Reminds me very much of the movie Elvis and Annabelle for literally no reason. The music sounds nothing like what it would belong there, but for some reason it triggers memory and I don't know why. Maybe the lead singer kind of sounds like, uh, what's his name in the movie? I don't know. Totally different feel from Keaton Henson. I'm gonna let you listen to a second. explain what that sounds like but it's amazing I love it so much yeah and it was called Strange Trails that's the album the Airborne Toxic event as a general music favorite I'm still loving them listening to them almost every single day big big fan oh god one last thing one last thing ASMR has been oh god it's been my savior this year it helps me fall asleep it helps me curb migraines a little bit it helps take the sharpness off of them when they're beginning before they really set in autonomous sensory meridian response so it can be audi audi audible, audible, it can be sound <laughs> or it can be visual also. It's like where gentle sounds are made and there's whispering and it's just really relaxing. Um, if you're not one that's able to meditate because the silence is like distracting because you start thinking on your own, I recommend giving ASMR a try. Um, what else? Let's screwing on. So that's definitely like, that's probably my number one favorite of the whole year. <laughs> Along with my favorite human of the year, which is this guy. All right, so now we are going into like more makeup, skincare, that kind of stuff. I don't have too much. I tried to really narrow it down. Let's do perfumes first. I have three perfume favorites. It's the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. It's amazing. It's borderline licorice and I hate licorice. So if you don't like that smell, like don't be weirded out. Like I still think it smells amazing. It's like this borderline licorice warm vanilla. Um, the small ones smell differently from the big ones. I hate the way the big ones smell. Those smell like licorice. So I just keep buying the small ones. Um, another favorite that is a very vanilla, vanilla smell. And I can never pronounce it. It's all in French. It's the Eau de, Eau, Eau, Eau de Michon's Cologne. It's the purple one. It smells like pure sweet vanilla and it's amazing for that. And my other one, which I actually don't have on me, it's the uh, Beach Walk by Replica. Replica, Beach Walk. 
I'm saving up by the full size. I love it that much. I just have a roller ball, which was still expensive. Another favorite that is the same as last year is the Maria Badescu glycolic acid toner. I haven't been using this as much lately because uh, I've been absolutely lazy and I still haven't bought cotton balls, <laughs> but it's really amazing. I swear it has saved my skin. It's just phenomenal. It's about $18 and it's totally worth it. Now I've gone through a lot of foundations over the past year on my other channel. Some of the ones that I really love the formula for, like the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light, in 0.5 is still too dark for me so I'm really not able to wear it that much though the formula is amazing and it's kind of like my dream come true I just wish it was lighter and on day to day I get too lazy to mix in my white foundation mixer something that I have been loving a lot is the Kat Von D locket foundation I have mine in the shade light 42 neutral it is my perfect foundation shade like how NARS is just a little bit too yellow but it fit the lightness like this is everything uh formula is really great it's 24 hour wear full coverage it's awesome Another favorite that I have is the MAC Nourishing Waterproof Pro Longwear Foundation. Super long name. Mine's an NC15. Really big fan of this. It reminds me of the Kat Von D, though this, I believe, is like a little bit more um, forgiving over dry spots. Now, my favorite highlight of the year really should not be a secret. I've gone through two. Oh, it just broke. Oh, it, it shuts. No, it doesn't. Oh, well. I'm gonna... It's cheap. It's not a big deal. It is the Essence Eyeshadow in Snowflake. Straight up white. I'll use my hand just this true white shimmer through it. And it's not one of those that you put on your cheek and until you hit the light, you can see it. Like you can see this straight away, but because I'm so fair, I can get away with it. Um, it does blend out, but if you're not very, very fair, you probably won't be able to pull this off. Um, just cause kind of my base skin tone is virtually white. Oh, look at that, look at that shine. It's amazing. I've used two of these, this is my second one. They're really cheap from the drugstore though. You can get it from Target for like, three dollars I want to say. Now quickly I'm going to run through my favorite mascara of the year which I really discovered in the past probably probably five months. It is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Luscious Full Fan Effect. This one gives you so much volume and so much just density to your lashes. Now I'm going to go into lipsticks. First I'm going to go ahead and mention what I'm wearing right now though I literally just got it last week so it's not necessarily the color that I love so much as the formula but it is the Kat Von D liquid lipsticks, the everlasting liquid lipsticks. I have mine right now in Sanctuary. It's one of her new shades matches my shirt. Can you tell I love this color? But her lip liquid lipsticks in general are just my favorite. But a very, very, very close second is the BH Cosmetics liquid, lip liquid lipsticks. These are like, I think, $8.50, so significantly cheaper. I feel like the formula is very comparable. I just wish they had more shades. Kat Von D has so many more shades, and that's why it's my number one. But this one is in the shade Carla. It's this warm, like a warm rose, a warm rose. The lippy stick in I Heart This by ColourPop. It's like my perfect summer spring color. It's this really beautiful hot pink, but it's like deep enough, so it's like this really deep fuchsia. Okay, my last two favorites, I am right there at the end, is this guy right here, which is Sephora Tranquil. It is the contour powder that I used all year long, as you can see. So it's just really beautiful, cool toned color. My powder that I used all year long, and I will repurchase again and again and again because it's so beautiful, it is the Mineral Wear Powder by Physician Formula. It is not quite matte, it has this hint of a glow with it. It's all the way over there on the bed and I don't want to ruin my setup, but I've also really been loving the NYX Matte Black Liner. It's a liquid liner. I use it in like all of my beauty videos, it feels like. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know I was very late to the bandwagon here, but I thought maybe there's some more separation that you won't be so bored to death of hearing these videos, seeing them, also hearing them, but I mean, yeah. I hope that you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye.